Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Enterprise Connect 2019. Brought to you by Five9. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida. Lisa Martin with theCUBE, Stu Miniman joining me. We are on day three of our coverage of Enterprise Connect 19, thanks to our gracious hosts in the booth here, Five9. We're pleased to welcome from Five9 to the program, Wendell Black, VP of Global Channels and International Business. Wendell, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, Lisa, thank you for having me on. I know you're a bit of a celebrity because you have now been a CRN Channel Chief Honoree three times, most recently last month. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, absolutely a tribute to my team and uh, to the company's focus on building out uh, our channel business over the last three years. So uh, it's been uh, you know, a super time for Five Nines growth in this area and uh, it definitely is a team uh, engaged sport. A team that pulled you out of retirement, no less. Well, you know, we don't talk about that so much, but you know, it is exciting to be back in the business and uh, you know, working here to, you know, to build something new for Five9 and to help take us into the next uh, tier of business delivery. And uh, especially the expansion we're doing uh, you know, outside of North America. That's, uh, that's the really exciting part. Yeah, so Wendell, be, before we talk about the international piece, one of the things that's been really interesting to watch, anybody that knows the channel, is the cloud has had a dramatic effect on, on them. If I walk around this show floor, many of the companies here and the channel that they did were used to selling boxes, and then, oh, I need to understand software, and oh geez, this cloud, it's going to put us out of a business, they'll all go direct, but I'm sure you've got a lot of perspectives on this, so maybe help walk us through some of that transformation. Well, it's interesting. I've been an evangelist in the cloud space since uh, the late 90s. <laughs> and uh, so, the XSPs. <laughs> so we, we didn't call it cloud then. It was uh, you know, multi-tenant managed uh, service technology. But you know, the really exciting part is uh, you know, the last four or five years when it really caught on and started to take off. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of good trailblazing companies out there that you know, have won the minds of people for cloud and the CRM or the ERP and other spaces. You know, telecommunications is kind of the lagging uh, you know, technology area to be adopted uh, you know, as standards for cloud. But uh, I believe today, you know, most IT buyers are, are trying to figure out why not cloud rather than why go to cloud, and that's a game changer. Yeah, so I, I, I'm curious just from the channel perspective itself, we understand the customer journey, but the, the channel people, was there, do they have the skill set that they need to go, was it just some retraining, was it partnerships like, like yours, you know, how, how did that transition go? Yeah, that's a great question, and I really think that the channel has the skills. You know, they just have to adapt and retune a little bit. I mean, things just happen faster when you do the cloud. And, and we have uh, you know, many discussions and experiences with partners where we're sitting around the table planning uh, a rollout and uh, you know, just doing the basic discovery. And you know, at the end of that, our PS team can say, well, and I've actually built it, let me show you how it works. You know, rather than you know, the six month or 12 month rollout process that yeah, you know, people were accustomed to in the past. So it's it's pretty exciting to be able to show people actionable results, that kind of time frame. Very, very fun. Talk to us about the, the partnerships and the influence that your partners have had on such a big successful close to FY18. You know, the, uh, you know, the partners uh, were strong contributors in uh, you know, our Q4 and you know, we certainly value uh, everything they're doing for us and with us uh, out in the market. Um, you know, our continuum of partners is uh, you know, both in the master agent community, so referral oriented relationships where uh, the Five9 direct sales team is uh, you know, carrying the water and working with them to get a deal done. Uh, but uh, also in our resale business. Uh, you know, it's great to see those partners doing more and more uh, to build the business in their portfolio and deliver joint customers. So it's a very exciting, uh, you know, kind of uplift to everything we're doing. All right, so, so Wendell, uh, one of the things when we, we talked to a lot of companies, it's like, well, there's North America and there's everything else. 
I was promised by some of your team members, you can actually give us a little bit more granular view of you know, Europe, Eastern Europe, and some of the other global differences that are happening in the marketplace. Would love if you could share some of your wisdom. Sure thing, and I, I believe that, uh, I don't want to be disparaging to uh, my friends in Europe, but they're a little slower on the adoption rate. Um, and it's interesting in my history in contact center, there were times where Europe led the field uh, with different technologies and you know, there are times that they were kind of behind uh, what North America was doing. Uh, this is one of the behind times. And I think it's just uh, you know, an ongoing concern in their minds about you know, how security and management of a cloud-based delivery model was going to affect their business and you know, how they were going to be looked at by regulators. But uh, I think we've overcome uh, those hurdles in uh, the last several years. Um, in 2018, our business in Europe doubled year over year, uh, and it's inspired us to, you know, to add more sales and other uh, departmental resources in the region so that we can do that again uh, here in uh, 2019. Um, similar story in Latin America. And uh, you know, there is a, a lot of growth, a lot of interest, and it's not just in the mid-market anymore. You know, we're talking big. You know, big call centers, and uh, they are all uh, jumping on the bandwagon uh, for all of the economic reasons that people want to go to the cloud in the first place. You know, it's less expensive to get started. You know, it's easier to be nimble and flexible, and your staffing and costs, and um, you know, they all need those benefits just as much as a mid-market or SMB kind of a client. Well, I want to dig in a little bit further, Wendell, on how Five9 and your partners have helped some of these customers in Europe and Latin America become comfortable with we need to move to the cloud and also help them understand some of the other implications besides cost and things like the opportunity to start taking advantage of AI. Okay, great. Yeah, because in particular, uh, you know, one of our partners uh, in uh, the UK is specialized in uh, the travel, vacation, leisure kind of industry. And uh, you know, when they work in those markets, uh, a distributed workforce is very much kind of the norm for them. And so, uh, you know, one of their clients in particular has agents in the UK, they have agents in Germany, they want to manage them as a common group and be able to, uh, to manage their te um, television advertising to be able to staff and respond based on wherever the load is, you know, whenever uh, things are going on in their you know, marketing activity. That's, that's a key flexibility win for them. And they get the right staff at the right time to be able to, you know, to cover the television advertising, which is pretty costly, uh, but uh, it's a big win for them to, you know, to have that flexibility with Five9. You know, it's interesting. We actually have only talked a little bit this week about the distributed workforce, and I'd love to get your perspective. Uh, you know, I think back, there's you know, a large apparel company in the Northeast that when they didn't have any of their agents you know, in their headquarters, and you know, it was something that got written up you know, when that had happened. So it, today, you know, what, what is that, that mix, and you know, are there some geographic differences uh, that you're seeing that? Yeah, there are some differences uh, you know, just based on the infrastructure that may be available. And you know, we find that uh, a home-based workforce is a little bit more challenging in Latin America than it is perhaps in Europe or in the US. But then there's also cultural differences. Um, you know, there are some countries that actually regulate that the employees have to show up in a physical building or you're violating the law because you might be taking advantage of your employee. So, I mean, that's, you know, different, different strokes for, uh, you know, for different uh, locations. We are finding it, though, more and more desirable because of all the reasons that, you know, have been around for a long time. You can save on real estate, you can save on uh, the wear and tear of your employees traveling, but probably the biggest one is the benefit of flex staffing that allows you to get the right number of people you know, for a short shift to cover your peaks or your, be ready for your valleys. Um, that you know, if people have to drive to an office, they're just not as likely to want to sign up for. But that, uh, that business modeling uh, is actually becoming more and more compelling. Um, I don't know, driving around Orlando you know, this week, it was kind of a challenge uh, you know, on I-4 and with the rain and 
Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people who want to be at-home workers here, uh, you know, based on the weather this week. Definitely. So. This is um, the end of Enterprise Connect Expo Hall anyway today. Three full days. This Expo Hall, 140 vendors, new, new products, new services, 6,500 attendees. So much excitement in this hot, hot contact center market. What are some of the things that excite you that you've heard from partners and customers that just think we're on the right track? The momentum, the, the wind is at our backs. Well, and you mentioned uh, AI and one of your earlier questions, and that's kind of the buzz. Everybody wants to talk about automation and machine learning and yeah, how you can bring AI into uh, you know, interacting in the call center. Uh, I'm sure you've heard from other people that have you know, been up here. The, the focus we see in the near term is on agent augmentation and you know, enhancing you know, agent performance through you know, those technologies. And, you know, a lot of people you know, would have approached this uh, you know, thinking like IVRs. In the past, I can replace agents with interactive voice response. Well, we really want to make a smarter, better customer serving agent and bring that technology into play to do it. That's, to me, going to be the you know, things I've been seeing, exciting new uh, technologies that can be applied in you know, real-time transcription and you know, providing uh, the ability to read that and data dip and serve things up for, for agents to allow them to, you know, to be more on the ball talking to a client. Yeah, that augmented agent is definitely something that came up quite a bit. We even talked with your CEO, Rowan Trollop, about that. And the importance of empathy and voice that us consumers, oh. I would love to know that I, you would too, an augmented agent on the other end who knows, okay, I understand the issue, I see how many times this person has reached out through different channels and they're actually going to use that technology to facilitate a resolution and hopefully drive up CLV. I mean, that insight into the customer experience is key for the agent to be able to do more and do it better. Uh, you know, we've been talking about that kind of insight for years and years. Uh, you know, technology is caught up with desire. And so now that uh, you know, we have the technology to do it, uh, you know, we can allow the agent to focus more on their conversation with a customer and not have to be working the keyboard in order to retrieve the next thing that uh, they need to take care of. And so uh, a better prepared agent, you know, knowing the background of the client, you know, is going to give them a much better experience. And you know, that's what Five Nine's trying to deliver in the market. We've heard that resoundingly throughout the re through your partners, customers, and it's been fantastic. Wendell, congrats again on your three-time Channel Chief Honoree uh, record, and I'm sure there's got to be a fourth one around the corner. I won't jinx it, but I'm All just right. going to guess. Thank you. We thank you so much for your time. Lisa, appreciate it. Likewise. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.